Pro Wrestling Noah, July 16, Nippon Budokan. Keiji Muto's chosen venue, the Nippon Budokan. The first fight of his retirement streak. The challenger, Supernova Kaito Kiyomiya. Don't miss Keiji Muto's retirement run. Noah. Keno challenges New Japan Pro Wrestling Satoshi Kojima for Noah Gold, the GHC Heavyweight Championship. And Ninja Mac is back! On top of that, Rob Van Dam in a hardcore rules match. International stream on Wrestle Universe. Bonjour, welcome to another edition of Cafe de Rene. James here. I'm trying to get that over, by the way. That's my Twitter handle, James here. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to another episode. Uh, joined once again by the star of the show, Mr. Rene Dupree. Rene, bonjour, hello, Konnichiwa. We got heat, James. We got heat, me and you. Oh, you're goddamn right we do. More heat than the sun. You're on that so, uh, for those of y'all, tuning in uh this is the first episode back after my uh gastroenteritis aka food poisoning and uh jameson mistakenly told y'all that i ate all the mcdonald's food that was on the table oh nay nay i had the one cheeseburger all right that's all i ate and it almost killed me right yes so we taped that on a Tuesday, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I ate the burger that night. I woke up about two or three in the morning with the sharpest pain in my lower intestines. I felt like someone was stabbing me in the guts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then for the next three days, I couldn't eat. I couldn't get off the toilet. And I had to go to the hospital. Now, I'm thinking it might be corona, right? The coronavirus. Because I think there's a new strand or something. That's one of the uh, that's one of the symptoms, right? Right. Yeah. Another. Yeah. 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 So uh, no, man, I dropped four kilos. So that's like eight pounds. I and just as a precaution, ah, uh -huh. you're looking lean. <laughs> yeah. No, but as a precaution, that's why they took me off the show because you don't want to take a chance, right? Yeah. Uh, a few of the guys, I think there because there was two shows. There was one in um, Shinjitsu, uh, Shinjuku, sorry, not Shinjitsu, yeah. Shinjuku. And two of the guys actually had a high fever, so they got taken off. And then, you know, I had my, my little condition there. So I did not eat $75 with the McDonald's. I had the one cheeseburger. I bought it. I bought that food for some of the young uh, trainees. Right. Because I'm a given motherfucker. Do you know what you need? I need a lot of things. You need a hug from Tony Khan. <laughs> Insert image here. <laughs> Yeah, I seen that. Hey, man. Uh, I'd take a hug from Tony along with a seven figure payday. Yeah. Yep, Tony, if you're listening. All right, baby. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll be doing more than just a hug. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, All right, so what are we talking about here? Well, before we get to today's topic, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and like helps the channel out. I saw, I just saw an interesting news article, uh, Renee. Mm. Are you aware of an infamous dick flipper wrestler? 
from California. Hmm. Yeah, what about him? What's going on? By the names of Mr. Joey Ryan. Okay. Well, he's been quiet now for the past, well, since the allegations came out, which, wow, that must have been like two years ago now. Yeah, it's been um, a while. I think he's, from what I've seen, he's still like uh, dealing with that legal issues. Well, allegedly, he's been working in the Disneyland for the past three or four months on the uh, Jungle Cruise ride. And uh, apparently Disney didn't do the back check, like, you know, like, you know, when they check employees because it didn't come up because they hired him under his legal name and the allegations was for his stage name. Right. So they found out and he's been working there for three or four months on the uh, Jungle Cruise and uh, they've just fired him. So he has been w wondering where he's been. <laughs> he's been in Disneyland. <laughs> Or Disney World. Wow. I'll tell you, man, some people can't handle getting, you know, notoriety or somewhat famous. You know what I mean? They can't handle uh, it goes to their head and then all of a sudden their ego. And then if you have any type of like, uh, bad habits or defects of character mm. that notoriety or somewhat fame can you know bring those to light because you, you're more accessible to it if it's drugs or women or whatever right i find um, it um, amazing because if there was one person that was his biggest enemy it was jim Cornette. And uh, rightfully mm -hmm. so, because what Joey Ryan was doing in the ring was an embarrassment to wrestling. And yeah, I'm all for ha ha and fun, okay? I fucking love Dunk the Clown, okay? And so, but it was just such stupid things he was doing. And Jim Cornette hated it, rightfully so. And you get the online fans, and they was criticizing Jim. Oh, you're behind. You're stuck in the past. You don't know what you're talking about. It's all fun. Jim was proven to be right on this one. <laughs> so, um, fair play, Jim. But, so, yeah, so uh, that's just a little, uh, uh, what do you Yeah, someone like? had messaged me, someone had messaged me years ago about going to California, and they asked right. me if I'd work with this guy. I said, absolutely right. not. Yeah. yeah. That's in no fucking way. And it was like seeing some of the legends, people I respect, like Mick Foley and even fucking Ken Shamrock taking this bump. I'm like, really? I mean, I, I wished he was in the ring with Scott Steiner because <laughs> Scott Steiner will have showed him what. <laughs> right, didn't he work with Scott, but Scott refused to take it, right? Yes, because Scott's apparently got some self-respect. Oh, he'll take the payday. He probably asked for double his normal amount and he said, yeah. no fucking way you're touching my dick and doing that bullshit. Yeah. Oh, no, they had to touch his dick, Joey's dick. Oh, yeah, then Joey flipped him with the dick. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I won't do that. Right. Well, speaking of dicks, uh, today's topic we're talking about Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> well, a great segue. <laughs> God damn, James. So, okay. uh, so thanks everyone for voting. So, um, hold on, hold on. Hey. Oh, shit, I got it all on my face. I, I remember doing that, learning how to do that when I was like 10, and I just wouldn't stop doing it. <laughs> but, uh, good. So, yeah, so Triple H. So, we're getting to Renee. So, Triple H, you grew up Attitude Era fan. Uh, so, we're talking before you met Triple H. Was you a fan of DX? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't say I was, <clears throat> I don't think I was ever the biggest fan of his. I mean, I was just a wrestling fan in general, right? So everybody, you know, the fact that he was a bodybuilder, had a really great physique, because I was into bodybuilding too, right? Yeah. So, But I mean, like Road Dog coming out with that famous line, you know, oh, you didn't know? That was hot for, for a minute. You know, but 
I mean, when I was in high school, I remember it was, uh, we went to a house show or a live event in my hometown. And the next day, every single guy in the school had a DX, it was majority DX t-shirts. Wow. Yeah, yeah, everybody. You know, it's because it's it appealed to like the the youth movement at that time, right? This is before everybody became overly sensitive and woke and all that other bullshit, right? It was just like yeah. an aggression. Yeah, yeah. The good old late days. 90s was, yeah, the late nineties was a very uh, testosterone driven fucking. You know. <clears throat> but I I bought a Stone Cold's t shirt. Other side, jackass. Oh. <laughs> When's the last time you've been down the street shopping or doing whatever and seeing people wear wrestling t-shirts? Uh, I did a gig. I did a gig in West Virginia once a couple of years ago when I saw, was it Big, Big Cass and uh, Enzo? Yeah. Yeah. I saw a girl wearing it. She was, uh, I think she might've had, uh, what's the proper way to say, um, special, special needs. All right. Right, yeah. Other than that, I can't tell you, dude. Oh, I think I saw someone wearing a Kevin Owens, I was walking through Atlanta airport. I saw someone with like a Kevin Owens t-shirt. The only shirts I see, you see an NWO shirt. Um, Oh, I see an NWO shirt here in Tokyo. Yeah, because they still sell it. Chono sells the NWO t-shirts through his his website and his, uh, he's got a clothing store here. Right. Yeah. But yeah. NWO shirts, I see a couple of Austins. I do see a couple of Bullet Club shirts, uh, but rarely, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. current day stuff, nothing. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you what a current day wrestling t-shirt looks like. I couldn't, actually. Unless unless it's like on, like now I'm working for Noah, so now I, I get to see like, and I do see a few here, I got Peros, Peros Del Mal. Yeah, the convenience store next to my my apartment. Yeah, the guy was wearing like uh, he was all decked out, dude. He had like the fucking t shirt, and then he had like a hat. Yeah, yeah. Over here, it's a total different world, dude. Total different universe. You know, I mean, there is WWE fans, I'm sure, but for the most part, they look at wrestling like a sport, and every promotion is a different sports team, right? Right. For example, in the UK, you got uh, Manchester United, then you got Arsenal, then you got, right? Liverpool. Liverpool. So it's, it's kind of like that. That's the way you look at it, right? So. So what's... Back, back, back to the son-in-law. Come on. Back to the son-in-law. So, so you have uh, signed for, well, I can't imagine you met him before you signed for WWE, if you did tell me, but... You first got into uh, OVW. Um, sometimes you would see some of the main roster talents visit OVW rather to work out, uh, you know, recover from an injury or like, you know, if some people say Mark Henry, they would send back down to learn a new hold, I suppose you could say. Uh, did you see Triple H down OVW? I can't imagine you did. No. no. First time I met him was when we debuted in Boston. Right. And I'm going to let you guess how it went. There's a pattern here. All of them's got the problem. It's not you, it's them. <laughs> oh, no, it's it's me. <laughs> so how did it go? How are you doing, sir? <laughs> oh, no, no. See, I did the sir thing with Flair. I did the sir thing with Kane. Didn't go so well. So here, I mean, here's fucking Triple H, dude. You know, let's get ready to suck it. I mean, fucking, you know, time to play the game. I'm thinking, all right, this guy's a dude. 
right? So I was like, what's up, man? Boom. As I turn around, he's like standing above a light. And you know that face he makes after he spits the water and his nose flares like fucking 10 inches to each side? And he's bright red. I'm like, oh, I done fucked up here. <laughs> it was a good run one day. It was a good run. Nice knowing you. And the thing is, he was with his like his parents because I think he's from New Hampshire. Oh, that's yeah, something yeah, yeah. I've never heard about his parents. Yeah, well, there was an older woman. I'm pretty sure it was his mom. I think, yeah, right. it was. Yeah, I've never heard anything so, about yeah. his parents. I just for some reason <laughs> I can't help but I see him as Vince McMahon's son. <laughs> right. No, I think I think he was brought up like with a really good family, like his parents were still together. Yeah. All that jazz. I don't know too much about it, but you know, he was raised with good values and stuff, right? That's amazing. Like, uh, I mean, we'll get back to him, but his gimmicks. So, you know, obviously he's in WCW terrorizing, then Jean Paul Levesque comes over to WWF slash a Hunter Hearst Hamsley, the uh, Connecticut uh, blue coat or something like that. And blue blood. blue blood, that's right. Then all of a sudden, he gets paired up with China and he starts throwing crotch chops with uh, Shawn Michaels and being like a sophomore. So all of a sudden, now he's like coming to the ring with Motorhead playing his theme song. It's amazing the evolution of his character to that point. It's longevity, right? I'm surprised you two didn't get along purely down to your music taste because you're a Motorhead fan. I am like Metallica, I like Slayer, I like Pantera. I also like country music, country western. I don't know. One time he made a comment. This is when the Walk the Line movie came first came out with oh, like Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. Yeah, Johnny Cash story. And he was by the ring. I was like, he was like, he made a comment like, "Who's gonna listen to that music this day and age?" I'm thinking to myself, dude, you never worked the territory. <laughs> because for all the young wrestlers out there, listen to old school country music. I'm telling you, get that beat in your head. Because when I started with my dad, just setting up rings and stuff, I was 13, right? And that's all you would play on the, you'd have tapes. Cassette tapes. Yeah. Right? So, and that's all we play. And I hated it at first, but after a year, two and three, I knew every lyric to every song. And <clears throat> I listen to it to this day. And if I ever do road trips, like when I ran my tours, boom, we got fucking country classics on the on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he made that that comment. I thought that was, you know. I'll imagine John, uh, Johnny Cash. I'll imagine The Undertaker was a fan of country music. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. Yeah, I've got... Austin. Probably, Austin. I'm, a, I'm, I'm assuming Bradshaw, guys like Billy Gunn, all the guys from the South, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So, um, I would imagine he was. Was uh, Triple H already set in Gorilla at this point, part of the team, Gorilla team? No. Maybe towards the end, I might have seen there a few times. <clears throat> but. Oh, no, you could tell he had. He was, he was the golden boy, right? But very insecure. Right. I caught, the, I caught that right off the bat. Yeah. I remember this one time we're in, I think it's Poughkeepsie, New York, Mid Hudson, Mid -Hudson Civic Center. It was one of the old buildings that ECW would run. Okay, it's not a very large arena, but anyway, the dress rooms are in the basement. It's like an open concept with separate rooms, right? And in that open concept, it's all mirrors, okay? And I had my shirt off. I think I was warming up in that open, like that open area, boom, push-ups and stuff. And I had my shirt off and I was talking to one of the agents. So here comes the son-in-law passing by, right? He goes, Phew. and as he's looking in the mirror next to me, he puffs himself up. I swear to God, it's happened. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got this out. Did you ever wow. see the um, the pose down between him and Scott Steiner? This, this would have been a few months before you debuted. Oh yeah, of course I've seen it. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? You know, as far as, far as the physique, like <clears throat> aesthetically and symmetrically and all that shit, um, Hunter had a way better physique than yeah, than Scott, or pretty much anybody else in the business. Mm. Yeah. Like if you were to enter a bodybuilding contest with all the boys in it, you'd probably you'd probably come out on top. <clears throat> Did you ever hear Scott Steiner when uh, WWE asked him to take a uh, piss test? Steroids? He said, Wasn't I'll take like, Yeah, sitting over a limo and me and the son in law will go together or some shit. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Scott Steiner. Scott, it, I, I would love to get you on. It'd be a pleasure and a privilege. So, fingers crossed we'll get it done one day. Yeah, I get um, along great with Scotty. Oh, yeah. And I've said to you many times, big fan of his nephew, Bron Breaker. Uh, doing really well at the minute. He's NXT champion again, but he's definitely someone pegged for being one of the big stars for the future, definitely. Oh, that's good. So, um, so um, you made your debut. Uh, mm-hmm. Attacking Scott Steiner, coincidentally. So, uh, any feedback from Triple H in the locker room? Well, was he in the locker room, or did he have his own separate locker room with Evolution? Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, they all... There was any, never any of that that I saw. Oh, right. I mean, they, they might go huddle around in a corner, like, you always be around Flair. Yeah. And you always want Flair to tell them stories and stuff. Imagine by this time he was probably in his early 30s, right? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, 2003 sounds about right. Yeah, because he's 50 now. I'm 38. So he'd be 12 years older than me. So yeah, so he's in his early 30s, like 31, 32, when I was around him. Amazing longevity. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Well, besides, you know, the torn, torn biceps and torn pecs and torn quads and yeah. But that goes with, you know, that goes with the t- territory, I guess. I mean, knock on wood, I never tore shit. Yeah. I just eat McDonald's and get food poisoning. <laughs> I've said, uh, I've told uh, Renee, everyone, when he comes over to the UK, we're going to Nando's. <laughs> nice, clean oh, chicken. Oh, yes. Yes. <clears throat> For everyone listening to this, the UK has a chain, a chicken chain. It's like ro- rotisserie chickens called Nando's. And it has the greatest fucking sweet potato fries and slaw. And I believe they have free refills there too, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not rotisserie, it's uh, flame grilled. Okay. So it it is, tastes amazing anyway. It's like oh, my yeah. favorite chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. This episode of Cafe de Renee has been brought to you by Nando's. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Have you heard of the inf- I don't know if you've heard it, but Renee, I know we're going all over the place, everyone, but there's an infamous black Nando's card and it's free Nando's for life and there's like a handful of celebrities that's got it. If anybody from the UK that has any pull with Nando's can give me that card, I will be forever grateful. We'll give you a T-shirt. We haven't made any yet, but we'll get we'll make one. Yeah. An eight by ten. <laughs> Speaking of food and diets, obviously diet's very important to yourself. Um obviously yeah. Triple H I would imagine the same. What was Triple H's diet? Did you see much of it? <clears throat> well, the time that I was there, I think him and Stephanie were trying to have children. Yes. Because he, uh, you know, listen, you can only stay in tip top shape year round. I mean, certain people like, like freaks, like John Cena could do it. But John Cena was a single guy, wasn't married, never planned on having children. You know, guys like Ultimate Warrior. But, you know, I mean, by that time, you could tell he was getting a little softer. I mean, still a great physique, but he was putting on a little bit more, Yeah, you know, padding, mm. right? 
But no, I'd see him eat like protein bars and uh, one time <clears throat> we're in Alaska and he bought pizza for all the boys, right? Right. But back then, especially, I was, I still am, fuck it. Like that McDonald's burger that I had, that was the first McDonald's burger I've had all year. And that's the sh- gone on truth. And I'm firmly believe the reason why I got sick is because I eat so clean all the time that that shit food attacked yeah. my insulin. Yeah, 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 100%. Anyway, so he bought a bunch of pizza <clears throat> and it wasn't my cheat day. So that's how disciplined I am. I was like, oh, no, I'm good. And like behind it, he kind of like got pissed off that I want to eat the pizza. I was like, it's no disrespect to you, but it's just like, I don't feel like eating the pizza. <laughs> it's not my day to eat the pizza. I appreciate the gesture, but more for everyone else, right? Yeah. You know, some of these moments, Renee, and obviously when you've turned these down, it's not out of spite or anything. It's just you looking after your body. But this moment here where Triple H is offering you pizza, or there's, there was a time when The Undertaker offered you and Paul London a beer. Mm. Knowing now, like, how things was do you wish that yeah it's not because you want it it's just like a i don't know just to be part of one of the boys just to say yes even though yeah like a respectful type thing yeah, 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 yeah. Do you wish you could have done think obviously you can't look with regrets but do you kind of wish like yeah perhaps i should have just said yes yeah yeah no well, now that i'm older like but because I went through that, like if I offer, a, if I would offer somebody something, or in, I don't, I don't take it personal. It's like, okay, you don't want anything. That's fine. It's this, it's the thought that counts. Right? Yep. I'm not so narcissistic and egotistical that where I just assume you should do as I say. You know what I mean? I don't have that mentality at all. You know? right. So. Uh... So as user uh, debut and uh, someone who just returned to the company also and started feuding with Triple H was a uh, big Kevin Sexy, yeah, uh, Kevin Nash. Uh, you mentioned you've had what, uh, that interaction with him at the um, airport. Um, any other times with him or any good stories? I remember one, this is when he got, like, he was uh, gone from the company, right? And we're in the Atlanta airport. And I'm, I'm trying to take a quick, like, 15-minute snooze. Just sitting in the chair, just trying to get a power nap, you know. All of a sudden, I feel this huge hand just, boom, boom, like, pop my chest. I'm like, what the fuck? I see his big fucking head just staring at me. And then he just points at me with a big smile on his face. He probably thought I was all pilled up or something. I wasn't. Just trying to get a power nap. Uh, no, he's yeah. a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Yeah. Mentioned, uh, well, we've just released our interview with uh, Sean Oliver, which if people has not checked out, please do. So it was a great interview. And uh, him and uh, Kevin Ash obviously coming out with a new podcast, Click This, which me and you, we can't wait for it ourselves. So uh, I reckon he's going to have plenty of cool stories on it. Yeah. yeah. But, so. oh, I remember one time with Nash. We did a tour of Australia, right? And I think it was that day, like the morning we got in or whatever, he actually collapsed in the lobby of the hotel. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think he got taken off the tour. Yeah. You know, don't forget, he's a big man, seven foot tall, over 300. You know, a flight to Australia, that ain't easy, even if you're business class. Because <clears throat> for him, it's like us being an economy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right? People don't realize how much the travel takes out of you. I've heard that. Oh, God. Different time zones. You're up 30, 40,000 feet in the air. And, you know, you guys sit in your seat and when you're a big athlete like us i mean we're not normal people we're you know above 
average size, all of us, right? Yeah. Plus, it's the constant grind because, you know, back then the schedule was nonstop, right? Sometimes yeah. in a month, you'd be in three or four different time zones. It's kind of hard to adjust, right? I honestly don't know how you do it. I really don't. Um, like you said, like the road schedule. And I mean, um, that's the infamous story. And I know he wasn't a wrestler, but he was a referee. But obviously, the referees travel. Um, Joey Morella, with a monsoon's kid. And uh, it was during the time where the, Brett, well, Brett Hart wrote in his book, you know, and Brett Hart, Mark, and he said it was called the Killer Tour because he had so many dates and so much travel to do. And Joey, I think he was in the, who was he in the car with? Was it um, Whippleman? I think, Harvey Whippleman. I might be wrong. When he passed but away? Harvey lived, but Joey was, uh, passed away. He was driving and he just fell asleep. Fell asleep. Fell asleep yeah. exhaustion. And like, I'm surprised that hasn't, I mean, I'm thankful it hasn't happened to any wrestlers, well, as many wrestlers, but it's amazing how it hasn't happened to as many wrestlers as it should have. Yeah. It happened a lot in the territory days. I can imagine. Yeah. A lot of accidents and stuff. But, so yeah, it's, it's dangerous, man. So during your time on Raw, this is uh, during the infamous uh, Reign of Terror by Triple H. She was the uh, world champion and uh, basically squashing all the WCW guys, uh, Booker T, Scott Steiner, uh, matched to a degree, you could say. Um, what was your thoughts on this? Like him basically being the champion and for the company and just basically beating everyone? Somebody's got to do it. Might as well give it to a family member and trust them. How about trust? You know, it's like, okay, I will say this The Rock and Steve Austin should send a birthday and Christmas card to Ted Turner every year for life. Mm -hmm. Because it was, if it wasn't for the fact that he spent all that money to compete and they were beating Vince McMahon and almost put Vince McMahon out of business, I don't think they would have gotten the same amount of opportunities that they received. It would, have been the, it would have been the Hunter Hearst, Hemroy, uh, Helmsley, <laughs> Shawn Michaels, click all the way through yeah yeah well that was their plan to um basically take over when they did yes. for, they a did. Couple of, for a couple yeah. of years they took over and then mash and hall went to wcw and they basically took over wcw for a bit so uh and mm -hmm. now well obviously i don't know it's, it's definitely part of the click can, can, can we say that <laughs> she's married to one of them she's basically running wwe now Aaron Triple H, so they eventually... Yeah, women, women uh, have a tendency to be attracted to the bad boy. Well, mm -hmm. staying on that, so him and I was dating at this point, and uh, I think this was just before they got married or around about the same time. Uh, what were your thoughts at your first meetings with Stephanie, someone we haven't really spoke to about your relationship with her? How was she when you first met her? Didn't go well? No. No, with all the women, it went, went well. Oh, right. Oh. I was a cute little 19-year-old, French-Canadian boy. <laughs> I had a stronger accent back then, too, right? You're so innocent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never had a problem with the women, that's for sure. But I can, I can, I, listen, there's a reason why you shouldn't bring your, like, significant other around on the pirate ship, as we say. I mean, look at the statistics. How many guys who brought their, <laughs> brought their girlfriends or wives in the business no longer have a girlfriend or wife? <laughs> no, I'm trying to think who's has survived. Can't think of any on top of my head <laughs> besides Stephanie and Triple H. Booker T and Charmel. Yes. 
Red Dog and Jazz. That's the only two I can think of. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we knew what happened to Matt Hardy and Lita. From Lita and Edge, she ends up going with Spunk. Uh, Spunk, sorry. Um, Sable Mark Marrow. Sable Mark Marrow. Oh. Elizabeth Macho Man. Jake and his wife. Um, Stevie Green and Kimberly eventually got divorced. Goldust and Marlena. Yeah. So, seems to be better these days. There's a, a lot more couples in WWE what seems to be lasting together, I've noticed. But even then, they're somewhat split up and end up partnering up with someone else from the Raptor, which must be awkward. I think it's just marriage in general this day and age. There's too much temptation out there, especially with the social media stuff. And the, I mean, you can go on Tinder, swipe left. Was it swipe left or right? I don't know. You swipe the fucking thing anyway. Yeah. Then you got there's too much temptation. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what the fuck's the point? Okay, let's get married. There's a 50-50 chance we're gonna get divorced. So let's just flip the coin. Oh, because we're in love. Yeah, shit changes. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was actually part of another relationship. He was with China and obviously um I didn't go to plan, and uh, unfortunately, she died. Did you ever hear anything? Oh, she about never recovered from that. She never recovered from that. Oh, no. Did you ever no. hear anything about China during your time there? Was anyone was she ever spoken about, or was she given another CRISPR and Watt treatment? Just don't talk about her. Never heard a word. Not a word. No. Never heard a word. Right. Never met her either. It's kind of funny because. When I was living in Japan, no, I think she had moved here as well. Yeah, she, she came over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was either the time I was living here or the time that I was living in the dojo for uh, Muda Wrestle One. I would spend like four or five months of her time just living in the dojo, training and stuff. I think she was living here at that time. But she would make vlogs and stuff, and she was she was all screwed up. I remember I watched the vlog of her and um, it looked like she had like black eyes, but her face was like really like gaunt. Like uh, there was like no fat there, it was just like real skinny in that. And I was like, wow, she looks rough. And then literally a week or two later, I heard the news that she died. Love kills slowly, dude. Sure does. Most powerful drug in the world. So, back to the son in law. So, Triple H had the reign of terror, and uh, the person who put a stop to it was uh, your good friend Bill Goldberg. Um, <laughs> did you hear much reports of their matches? Was they just like, was really He wasn't very well liked. Not at all. No. Um. I actually felt sorry for the guy because I had my own like runs with like or in or I seen just what type of a prick the hunter could be back yeah. then. Mind you, I haven't been around the guy in 16 years. And I have no intentions of ever seeing him again ever. So <clears throat> but yeah, he, he could be a real prick. And then I kind of felt sorry for Bill, but then as you get older and you hear other stories about the way you conduct business elsewhere, very selfish. Mm. And some people say, well, you got to be selfish for the right reasons. Yeah, well, if you're going to pay me a, a large sum of money, I understand the business. I'm going to do business the right way so I know that their business grows. You're giving me a hell of a payday, a six-figure payday. I will take care of myself to an extent, but at the end of the day, you do what's right for the company. Mm. That's the right way to do business. I don't think he ever understood how the business really worked. He understood how his business worked. You know he was, saying? Yeah, he was held by the hand through WCW, basically, and... But even then, you hear the stories how um, Kevin Nash could work him up so easy. And uh, Kevin, he was like Kevin Nash's plaything. He would just like wind him up. And do you remember the spot where 
Brett came to the ring and he wore like the uh, steel plate under his jersey. He was in Toronto. He was That's wearing right. a Maple Leafs. Yeah, Maple Leafs jersey. That just shows how fucking smart Brett is. Oh, yeah. Well, Brett came up with his idea. It must have been like a week, two weeks before. And then he told Goldberg about it. And Goldberg was like, yeah, it's a great idea. I love that. And rather the day of the show or the day before the show, Goldberg, I changed mind. I don't think I should do it. I think it's going to make me look weak. Apparently, it was rather Hogan or someone else in creative that said to him, no, don't go for it. It's going to make you look weak. And because he was so easily led, he believed him. And Brett was... Brett took a bitch fit. Basically, he said, no. He said, this spot's going to get you over and get me over. And it's going to be a moment for the fans to remember when you think about it as well for WCW, especially these years when WCW wasn't doing so great. It is a spot you remember. And, you know, Brett, one of the smartest men in the business, um, obviously it paid off and it was a great moment, but it showed you how naive Goldberg was in the company. There was another story too I heard Brett say about that night in Toronto. Bischoff wanted him to go on shit all over the Canadian fans. Yes. And the way that Brett says the story, like as Bischoff is telling him this, there's like thousands and thousands of fans chanting Brett's name. Yeah. As Bischoff is telling this to Brett, this idea. And it's like, no. See, that's that's a part where it's like, like, no, like. I did the angle in fucking WWF where I was anti-American, all right? Mm -hmm. And you want me to come here and shell over the Canadian fence too and become total, yeah. I don't blame him for that, especially knowing how WCW, not knowing now how WCW is run and how uh, mismanaged it was. Let, let's let's stay on Brett. I know it's a Triple H episode, everyone, but we love Brett. How do you fuck up Brett? Him after the Montreal screw job, think about now, like, think about how what would have been like if the internet was around and like Twitter and social media. Bret Hart at this point was the biggest baby face in wrestling, you could say. She's been fucked over by the boss. So, he's okay, to yeah, him. yeah, how do you, yeah, how do you fuck over Mike Awesome is another guy, exactly. The fat, the fat chick thriller, that 70s guy, you got yeah. a fucking six foot three, six foot four guy that can fucking. Agile as a cat who fucking drew drew money in Japan, got over everywhere he was. Yeah. How do you fuck that up? How do you fuck yeah, how do you fuck up Brett? So, um, you even got guys own. like even no, you go you go to Mexico, you had uh uh all those great luchadors like Silver King, for example. Yeah. You know? And what do we do? We un we unmask all of them. <laughs> well, we unmask them and call them uh the LWO. Oh Jesus Christ. Wrong. I was a WCW fan growing up, but in hindsight, you look back and I'm like, wow, there's a reason why he's out of business. Uh, obviously, time at Warner Major, AOL, and all that shit, but I'm like, creatively, yeah, there was a lot of shit what went. How do you fuck up, Brett? <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it's a joke. Anyway, back to Triple H. I don't, we have to. I think we're just going to do an episode dedicated to Brett just read his book, paragraph by paragraph, <laughs> one day. <laughs> I've got the book in the here. I'll, I'll read it to everyone. That's what I'm going to do. Just release it episode by episode. Just me narrating his book if I get permission for it. So um, anyway, Triple H. So uh, Evolution's running wild at this point. Uh, himself, mm -hmm. Ric Flair, Batista and Randy Orton. You was good pals with Randy at this time. Uh, well, I think you mentioned before, Triple H would always kind of keep a strict eye on Randy. Yeah. Well, they separate him and Jindrak, right? That's right. And after that, he started traveling with Flair and shit. Hunter. But I will say this. During that whole era, my favorite theme, theme song was the Evolution theme song. Oh, yeah. That's a badass fucking theme song, dude. But yeah. Yeah. Lying in the yeah. stand. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I still listen to it to this day. Regardless of what I think of the parties involved. Mm -hmm. It's great. Fucking Lemmy, dude. Did he ever 
because obviously Evolution is the top heel act at this point. Um, you could say Kane's one of the top heel acts as well because he's just got unmasked and he's on the rampage. But obviously, Larry Sistons is the top heel tag team. Obviously, he's a feud with the Dudleys at this point. Um, did Triple H ever give, ever give you any advice, any tips in the locker room like to go out there with? Any good advice? There was a few times, like I remember when we made an event at Raw. I took that fucking chair shot to the head. Hmm. And that's like two weeks after being knocked out for about six or seven hours by Van Damme. And he was actually very complimentary of the match and all that stuff. So, but I was young, so I I, uh, I want to ask and talk to him about supplements <laughs> instead of wrestling. <laughs> yeah. I think he got offended by that. Right. You have to understand all these huge, huge stars. A lot of them are overly sensitive. Yes. Yeah. I can dig it. Yeah. One thing I've learned in life, like the bigger the ego, the more insecure they are, it seems. I can dig it. Okay. Anyway. We've got so many lawsuits. <laughs> anyway. I got some chopsticks here. <laughs> so, years ago, uh, so Triple H, uh, he suffered a hip injury at this point, didn't he? And uh, he started wearing the uh, long uh, trunks. Uh, this was during the time oh, he's been yeah, in the yeah. <clears throat> That's when he had the um, biker shorts he had pretty much, didn't he? The biker shorts, and he put his tights over top of it, right? Yeah, because yeah. he like, tore his groin or some shit, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. But, so um, he's had some nasty injuries. But um, coming towards the end of your run on Raw and moving to SmackDown, I'm guessing very little interaction once you move to SmackDown. Never. No I interaction. Never saw any of those guys. <clears throat> I think. Maybe, oh, I think we're still doing joint paper, like the big, the big four, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I never really got. In the deep conversation with the men. You no. Know? And whenever I try to, he'd be very like snobby and like cold. And... Oh, except the time. Remember, I told you my head exploded in the plane? Yeah. Uh, I walked into catering that Tuesday. That was a Tuesday after it happened. And I'm sitting talking with, uh, I think her name was Joanne or Jan. She used to cut the hair. They had like their own like stylist or whatever that cut the hair. And I'm telling her the story. And he's kind of like, I think he was impressed with the fact that and he was on the flight. Don't forget that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's seen the whole thing. And I'm thinking maybe. Did the office purposely send Hunter on that flight with me? Because they sent a trainer too. Yeah, because they also sent one of the trainers. So they knew how dangerous that shit was. I mean, it was dangerous because my head fucking exploded. But I think he was impressed with the fact that, one, that's a lawsuit. Yeah. That's a multi-million dollar lawsuit, which I would have won. But I didn't do that. No. <clears throat> and I could have easily said, you know, maybe I don't want to work for the next five, six months. <laughs> <laughs> but I should have to work the next, my next booking, right? So. What, one night you have mentioned before, and we haven't really gone into detail about it, was his uh, bachelor party. Oh, yeah. So you, you have meant you talked about. Pat Patterson coming into it and uh, yeah. Flair trying to do Ric Flair things. Uh, tell us more about that night. So how did the night start off with and who was your riding buddy like towards the venue? And where was the venue? I think it was in the Carolinas, the dollhouse. Right. One of the best shit clothes I've ever been to. 
open bar. Bradshaw tried to knock out Sly that night. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you want to hear the story? Yeah, please. Bradshaw was drunk. I know. It's a surprise to me, too. And he is drunk. He wants to fight. So there's <clears throat> Sly standing right in front of him. <clears throat> Mounts off to him, probably called him a French fairy, more than likely, because that's what I was called all the time. Takes a swing at Sly. Sly ducks. He ends up punching one of the referees. <laughs> Which referee? Do you remember? No, it was one. It wasn't Jack. I forget the guy's name. Great guy. Blonde haired kid, blue eye. Really cool guy. It Jack wasn't Kyoto. It wasn't Jack Doan. It was the other dude. I think he might be still there. Not Little Nate. God, I forget. Not Brian Hebner. No, I think he's actually announced his retirement by Ray Hebner. Did he? Yeah. Well, shit, he must be, Christ, he must be in his mid-40s, right? Yeah, great career. Um, trying to think which of the referees it is, Renee. Anyway, oh, carry on. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, Sky Sly squitted out of there. What else did I see? Shelton just jumping all over everybody. Shelton was having a great time. Everybody's having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Vince McMahon was out that night. Any fun yeah. Vince McMahon stories that night? No, just Val. Oh, I was getting massaged for about two hours by this really hot, voluptuous girl i was in a good state of state of mind i didn't give a shit about my surroundings <laughs> i think afterwards oh yeah yeah when you had that one gold digger fucking going after flair all night then when flair k faved her she asked me if i want to go i was like no i don't i know some men might think like or some women might think that men that's they'll just try to stick their baby maker into any pothole they can put it into, but some guys aren't like that. Uh, who else was there? Huh? No, sorry, who else was there that night? Was there Batista, uh, Kane, anyone like that? No, Taker? not Kane. I remember Lance. No, not Taker. Really? I know Lance, Lance, Lance Kane's wife wouldn't let him go. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, so Lance didn't go to the, to the club. Fuck, I'm trying. Oh, Val was there. Shelton. Pat. Pat made a cameo. Myself, Sly. I think Cena. Conway might have been there. Cena? Jesus. I can't remember. A bunch of referees. Kyoto was probably there. Of course, Kyoto was there. We'll, we'll ask Kyoto when he comes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kyoto is probably the most drunk. <laughs> Kyoto, the fucking. Think of the movie Animal House. Oh, yeah. Love Kyoto that fit... Yeah, Kyoto, Kyoto would fit in perfect there. He's great. <laughs> I love that guy. How did uh, what was Triple H like that night? Huh? How was Triple H that night? He wasn't there very long. Right. I remember seeing him and Vince walk in, maybe Shane. He could have been there. They were sitting on a couch, got a few lab dances, and the next time I turned around, they were gone. Right. Well, yeah. But everything was covered, man. <clears throat> I didn't drink, of course, back then. But I'm sure that two-hour chest massage was probably a, a few bills. Yeah. That was all covered too. So God knows how much they laid down to have, you know what I mean? Because it was basically our club for that night. Sweet gig. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. Hot ass you, women too. God, there's some hot ass women there. <laughs> Oof. You didn't go to the wedding, but did you hear many stories? Because I have. I heard the one about Michael Hayes acting like a jack off. Yeah. Did you hear what Ken Angle said to him? 
No. So if Michael Hayes is on the stage and he's, I think he sang a couple of songs and everyone was right. behind him, but then he just kept singing and kept singing. So I forgot who sent him up, but Kurt Angle went to take him down and said, right, come down. And Michael Hayes was like, what are you going to do, shooter boy? <laughs> and then a bit. <laughs> and the one person who got him down was actually Linda. <laughs> and, he, oh. and he went down. <laughs> Didn't you ever hear the story of him being on a plane and accidentally pissing all over Linda? No. You didn't hear that story? No. I heard that. Yeah. yeah you how do you accidentally piss on someone? <laughs> you did? No, I said, how do you accidentally piss on someone? <laughs> when you're drunk, anything's possible, dude. I swear yeah, to God, but, I put myself in predicaments when I'm, I'm hammered that how the hell, like, how did this happen? No, I never gone, you know, drinking and driving or anything like that, but I mean, like, blacking out in a rage and ripping off screen, 200 pound screen doors, not remember doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alcoholism is a motherfucker, man. <clears throat> Do I still drink? Occasionally. I plan on to the, in the next two weeks that I'm here. Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. But so, um, so yeah, so uh, back to Triple H. So, um, obviously, you moved up to SmackDown, basically, no contact with him pretty much. And um, did you have much interaction with him when you came back to Raw before your oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, because I went back with the funky mustache, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The insecurity was still there. I remember being in the mirror because I would, as you can see, I don't, I have like a brownish, reddish facial hair, right? It's actually turning gray now. <clears throat> so I would have to take mascara. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I would dye it in with mascara. So I'm in the mirror. I get, put myself right next to him. Now, mind you, this is like the biggest that I've ever been. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the fact that I made him look small. Yeah. He got mad. Like, oh. Yeah. He took off right away. He made some type of asshole comment. And so I look bigger than him. So he was like, what was he? Was you 280 at this point? Me? Yeah. 285. Yeah. Oh. Jesus. Yeah, I was a big dude. But you never see me on camera with uh, Orton, no. Batista, the son-in-law, Flair, Hunter. You know, they click. The, yeah. the, the, the cool kids. I was never on camera with those guys. A right. uh, couple more before we get to fan topics. Um, so they brought in ECW. Um, did you hear much of his thoughts on ECW? I would imagine something he was... Wasn't a fan of. Wasn't a fan of Sandman. Oh, there's a story. Just making one of his comments and Sandman like snapped back at him. Sandman don't give a fuck. No. Basically. They were at ringside during like rehearsals or whatever. <clears throat> Stanman can be a, or hack can be a little loud. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, Hunter, he won't admit it, but he's of French descent. Oh, that's another thing that pissed him off when I called him out on the fact that his last name is extremely French. Levac. Yeah. Levec, really? <laughs> yeah, like uber French. French people like myself have a tendency to like say what we feel. It's in our blood, it's in our genes. Yeah, that's why a lot of people don't like us. <laughs> so he made a comeback and then hack like made a, they like snap back and forth, right? But I think Vince liked hack. For some reason, maybe his attitude. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Vince likes two things. He likes great physiques and he likes badasses. Yeah. Yeah. Because those are the two things that draw money. You got Stone Cold. Kurt Angle. Yeah, Rock. Cena. There you go. Yep. So he asked for your release. I can't imagine you interacted with him much beforehand. No. When was the last time I seen him? Can't remember. No. I can't remember. It could have possibly been 2005 the last time I seen him. So we're, it could be 17 years since I seen the man. And uh, obviously he was on his way during your time there, but obviously now he's one of the top guys in the, the office in WWE. Um, he's back, right? They fired him, now he's back. Or they didn't fire him, they like demoted him. I don't think it was so much fire. I, I think he legit had a heart attack and he had to take some time off. And uh, it was actually, Stephanie was actually taking a break from WWE to look after her kids more. But because with what's happened to Vince McMahon, she's had to be yeah. brought back in, basically. So, um, oh, so yeah, now that you bring that up, I sent you that article that, that Rita Charleston or whatever the hell her name is, the referee. Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of ironic. We talked about it here. I brought it up. Mm -hmm. And now the New York Times actually interviewed her. Dude, they're coming after him hard. I said to you, um, it's something you see with... I'm not, I'm not saying this is going to happen to Vince McMahon, okay? I'm, as a WWE fan, a wrestling fan, I'm hoping these things ain't true because, you know, Vince McMahon's entertained me for many years. But obviously, I don't know what's happening, so I can only just see what's in front of me. But I've said to you, when one or two people steps forward, and we've seen with Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby and all these people, you start seeing more and more people. And by the sounds of it, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing some previous names from the past, um, you know, 80s women's wrestlers who disappeared. Or even maybe some divas through the from your era, even ruthless aggression. Um, just we don't know, but it's not looking great for him. But let's be honest. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So Triple H. So um, before I get the fan questions, so sounds like not the greatest person you got along with. Not really. No. But I was a kid and he was, well, he was a kid too, technically. Fuck. Mm. But I, was, I was a toddler. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen him in nearly two decades. And uh, I have no plans on making an effort to try and see him again. Mm. You can always pick up the phone and call me. There we go. Okay, fan questions. Fan questions. Uh, right. Right. Cool. Right. So let's get some fan questions. So a uh, question from Ahmed Mahmoud. How did the rest of the locker room feel about him? Did the mid-card and under-card guys have any public resentment regarding him? And was there a wrestler's court run by him on Raw? There was Cedar wrestler's court ever. The whole time I was there. Did the undercard resent him? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Anyone in if particular? It's not only, it's, if it's not only for the, the position that he was in, maybe out of enviness, it was definitely his arrogance. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> Bullsack Device. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> uh why the hell did Triple H bury Booker T? Booker T had it all. He had charisma, entertaining promos, and the ring, ring still to back it up. And Booker T could have been the next big thing. So, obviously, he's talking about the finish at WrestleMania 19. That's my attempt at the WCW. Yeah.
But of all those ex WCW guys, who was ultimately the most successful in that company? Yeah. Booker made an incredible living for his family and still does to this day. Right. Right? Yep. Give me the money. You can keep all the title belts you want. You can laminate them, stick them on your wall. And when you have guests over, you can say, yeah, back in my day, I'll take the money. Uh, Duffy is back. Is the rumor true that Hunter would grab wrestlers' asses and say, welcome to the club, buddy? No. No. That's probably a Bradshaw thing. <laughs> well, back when the road back Bradshaw. Well, I've heard the stories uh, when the wrestlers. Oh, we're shattered. not going to tell any stories. No, that's stories. Let's just Hunter, Hunter, roll. Uh, Corey Craig, uh, what do you think would have happened to the ECW reboot? if they added a star like Triple H or someone off the caliber of Batista slash Orton, et cetera? Nothing. It would just be another WWE Raw-type SmackDown show, which had been oversaturation. It was already oversaturated back then. Hmm. That's it. The key to longevity of this business is to not overexpose yourself in one market. Back in the territory days, guys would travel around the ones that were smart. If they I had a that. gimmick, they had an act, they would go three, four, five, six months here. Same. Back then, there were so many places to work. You could you could do a whole, a whole career without hitting the same place twice. But you had options. Right? I feel that way. That with... It's like anything else. You had that talent. I feel that way with WWE today because um, I don't know, I'm a big fan of this. Someone like Adolf Sigler, he's been in WWE for so long now. It's just, like whenever I see him, it's like, oh, it's just Adolf Sigler. And he's an incredibly talented guy and I'm a fan of his work. But there's so many of these wrestlers that's been there for longer than 10 years, 15 years even, and they just grow stale. Yeah. John Cena came back. Yeah. Did he draw? Yes, he did. <clears throat> he sold tickets. Yep. Did he draw viewership? No. The viewership was still down the week before. It's um, it's like because uh, I've mentioned it, I've reviewed OWWE pay per views, mm -hmm. and you don't realize the turnover, like in the early nineties, like the turnover, like from year to year of like wrestlers coming in and leaving. There was like so many. It's like the Warlord, for example. He was there for a couple of years. Well, he was there as a tag team, Pals of Pain. Then they pushed him as a singles. And a year later, he's gone and they'll bring someone else in, like a Bam Bam Bigelow, for example. Um, there was always a turnover of like old talent going out and new talent. But obviously, well, I say that there is a few promotions these days, but I don't know. It's just everyone's so content to just keeping it to be the same. And I'm like, we need to refresh it every, you know, four or five years because it's just so stale at the minute. <clears throat> I'll use myself an example here in Japan. I've been coming here for 15 years. I've worked for four different major organizations. It's like a sports team. You traded. I also took time off. Sometimes a year during the pandemic, it was two years, right? How can they miss you if you don't go away? Yeah. Right. I love I love listening to Metallica Black album, but after a while I get sick of it. I'll put yeah. it away for four, or five, six months, and then when I hear Enter Sandman come on the fucking radio, boom! I'm fucking got my hair down. I'm head bagging as I'm driving. Right. Cool. All right. Last two. Uh, Eighty-three. Ava one. Uh, thoughts on the curtain call. How do you think things would have played out if Triple H had won the 96 King of the Ring instead of Austin? Was it true that Hunter was scheduled to win the 96 Rumble, uh, 96 tournament? He was scheduled to win it, but obviously he didn't because of the curtain call, so he got punished and Austin won it. Uh, how do you reckon things would have played out had he 
won it as originally planned. Everything happens for a reason, and Vince, actually, Vince should fucking applaud and fucking pay him more money than the fact that he did succumb to peer pressure. Yeah. Because he was just trying to appease his buddies. Yeah. That's it. Right. Uh, last one. Uh, FM, if you could make changes to the group evolution, who would you have added and subtracted from the group? I would have hung Batista from the gallows. I would put myself in there. <laughs> you would have worked out well, Craig, then, because obviously you and Orton similar, like Orton's a little bit older, but yeah, I could see that. But it's an American thing, I guess. Or a maturity thing, or political thing, or so. Batista was physically larger than Hunter, but he was nowhere near the worker. Yeah, he was never a good worker. He had two fucking left feet. Uh, I never seen one of his movies. If his movies are anything like his fucking wrestling, he's the shits. Um, Orton was a natural. But but the Orton that I knew was such a jerk off, right? Flair was a politician, always has been, always will be. And Hunter's uh, Hunter's uh, in the families, you know. If not yourself, who would you have added? Because the original, well, the original plan it was always going to be Batista and Orton, but both went out with injury. And Batista went out with a longer injury and they brought in Jindrak. But it didn't work out. No. And uh, we've had Maven on the show. And when I've spoken to him on my show, uh, there was little talks that he was possibly going to be added to the group after Orton um, split and became babyface. I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. Could be. I don't That's know. Good. I have to really sit and think about it. It's kind of hard to think about nearly 20 years ago, right? On. Well, it's eight in the morning good. here, James. It's 12 o'clock at night here, Renee. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, before we do go, Renee, tell everyone who's joining us on the cafe this coming Monday. First got to Louisville, Kentucky in Ohio Valley Wrestling. He was, in my opinion, the top dog as far as total package. He had the look, the charisma, the microphone ability, and definitely the work. Doug Basham, ladies and gentlemen, one half of the Basham brothers. Uh, he'll be on next week, and it was a great interview. Uh, hope you all catch it. Because he's uh he's one of the best in my opinion. Cool. And yeah, everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, please, like I said, please smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, share it. Really does help us out. We're about one thousand three hundred away from ten thousand subs. So the one year anniversary is in uh, August, so uh, August twenty. So we want to hit ten thousand subs before then. So please hit that subscribe button. Really does help us out and. Like we said, we always deliver our guests and uh, big ones planned coming soon. So thank you again. And yeah, we'll uh, catch you uh, this coming Monday. Bonsoir. Pro Wrestling Noir, July 16, Nippon Budokan. Keiji Muto's chosen venue, the Nippon Budokan. The first fight of his retirement streak. The challenger, Supernova Kaito Kiyomiya. Don't miss Keiji Mato's retirement run. Noah. Shinihon Pro Wrestling. Amakudai Sakija Yendara. Keno challenges New Japan Pro Wrestling Satoshi Kojima for Noah Gold 
the GHC Heavyweight Championship. And Ninja Mac is back! On top of that, Rob Van Dam in a Hardcore Rules match. International stream on Wrestle Universe. 